dash 10 change expressed as a percent. So in this section, we are going to find percent change. We dealt a lot with percents last section and calculating different percentages of things. So this time we're going to talk about percent change. And we're also going to use percent change to find the relative error, error in linear and nonlinear measurements. And our essential understanding is that you can find a percent change when you know the original amount and how much it has changed. So percent change is that you can express an amount of change as a percent of an original amount. In this lesson, you'll learn how to calculate a percent change. Well, I hope so, since that's what the lesson's about. If a new amount is greater than the original amount, the percent change is called a percent increase, right? If you have more than what you started with, you are increasing. And if the new amount is less than the original amount, the percent change is called a percent decrease. The, per, the formula is pretty much the same. So percent change is the ratio of the amount of change to the original amount. So percent change, percent P, equals amount of the increase or decrease divided by the original amount. Okay. And then, of course, this is going to, this ratio, it's going to give us a decimal. And we can change it to uh, a percentage by multiplying by 100, which we can decimal place two spots to the right. Okay. So on the top is the amount of increase or decrease. So the amount of increase, we are, we're going to try to keep these numbers positive. Okay. So we don't want to introduce negative numbers into this formula. So if we're going to increase, we're going to go new amount minus the original amount, right? Because the new amount is bigger. If it's decrease, we're going to go original amount minus new amount to keep this positive since the new amount is uh, smaller than the original amount. So a common example for finding a percent decrease is finding a percent discount. In this lesson, round your answers to the nearest percent. Okay. So very, very common here is to find uh, a percent decrease or increase. Um, most of this is going to be with clothing for decrease, right? That's sale price, so percent off. And uh, for increase, that's going to be a markup. So a coat is on sale. The original price of the coat is $82. Sale price is $74.50. What is the discount expressed as a percent change? Original amount, new amount, okay? So as long as you remember that the original amount always goes on the bottom, okay, our percent change is equal to 82 minus 7450 over 82, okay? So that's going to be 750. 7.5, right? So we've marked this down. 7 bucks divided by 82. And when we divide this, we get 0 0.09 or about 0 0.09 or 9%. Since we're rounding to the nearest percent. Original amount minus new amount always divided by original amount. Average monthly precipitation for Chicago, Illinois, peaks in June at 4.1 inches. Average monthly precipitation in December is 2.8. What is the percent decrease from June to December? So my original amount is June. Okay, So we're going to go 4.1 minus 2.8 divided by where I started, 4.1. Okay, So that gives me... Uh, 1.3 over 4.1, which is 0.32, which is 32%. Okay. Original amount minus new amount always divide by the original amount. So a common example for finding percent increase is to see how much we have marked something up. Okay. So music, a store buys an electric guitar for $295. 
The store then marks up the price of the guitar to 340. What is the markup expressed as a percent change? So again, our percent change is going to be 340 minus 295. Bigger one always minus the smaller one. And in the denominator, in the bottom, always where you started. Right? Always the original amount. Okay, so my percent change is going to be 340 minus 295. So that's a difference of $45 divided by the $295 which gives me about 0.15 or 15%. Okay. In one year, the toll for passenger cars to use a tunnel rose from 3 to 350. What was the percent increase? Okay. So 350 minus $3 over the original amount, which was three dollars so that's going to be 50 cents over three dollars which gives me a 0.17 or a 17 percent increase so only 15 cents uh a 17 percent increase though so it's pretty, pretty substantial increase So our next essential understanding is that you can use percents to compare estimated or measured values to actual or exact values, okay? And this is going to be something called relative error. So relative error is the ratio of the absolute value of the difference of a measured or estimated value and an actual value compared uh, to the actual value. So my error is going to be the measured minus the actual divided by the actual. And we're always going to keep this. Again, we want to keep these things positive, so we're going to take the absolute value. Okay, um, You could subtract these either way you want, and you're going to get the same thing. When relative error is expressed as a percent, it's called percent error. So my relative error is the number, the decimal. When I change it to a percent, I get the percent error. So... A decorator, <coughs> a decorator estimates that a rectangular rug is 5 by 8. The rug is actually 4 by 8. What is the percent error in the estimated area? Okay, So don't forget how to find area for rectangles. Length times width. So here, the 5 by 8 rug is going to be 40. And the 4 by 8 rug is going to be 32. Okay. So, we are going to do the estimated value minus the actual value. So, estimated value, 40, minus the 32, divided by the actual value. So, this gives us 8 over 32, which is equal to 0.254. 25%. Okay? Got a problem? You think the distance between your house and a friend's house is 5.5 miles. The actual distance is 4.7 miles. What's the percent error? So what do we know? We know the estimate and we know the actual distance. So we can calculate this as 5.5 minus 4.75 divided by, that's the important part, and of course, absolute value. Same thing with this one up here, right? We're always gonna make sure that the numerator is positive in this case. Oh, and a new circle. Answer, 25%. Okay. So make sure that the numerator is positive, divided by the actual distance. So we have 5.5 minus 4.75, Excuse me. Divided by 4.75, which gives me 0.158. So that's going to be 16%. So in the last problem, the actual measurements were known. 
But if you don't know the actual measurements, but you know how precise your measurements can be, you can still figure this out. Think about the last time you used a ruler. Because the precision of a ruler is limited, you measure to the year's nearest unit or fraction of a unit, such as centimeters or quarter inches. The most any measure can be off is by one half of the unit used in measuring. Right? So you could have rounded up or you could have rounded down. Okay? But you can't go further than that. So you are framing a poster and measure the length of the poster as 18 and a half inches to the nearest half inch. What are the minimum and maximum possible lengths of the poster? Well, since you're measuring it to the nearest half inch, the greatest possible error you can make is half of that. So the biggest error you can make is a quarter inch, 0.25. So, we can take 18.5 and add a quarter inch to give me 18.75, or we can 18.5 and subtract a quarter inch and give me 18.25. So if I was somewhere in between these two, I would have rounded to 18.5, or I would have estimated the length as 18.5. If I was at 18.8, I would have estimated it that it's 19, okay? Because it's closer to 19 than it is to 18 and a half, because my ruler only goes by half inches, okay? So when you're trying to figure out these things, take your measurement and divide it by two to figure out what the uh, dimensions are going to be, okay? Our got a problem? A student's height is measured at 66 inches to the nearest inch, which means we could be off by as much as a half an inch. So it could be 66.5 or 65.5 when adding a half an inch and subtracting a half an inch. Okay. So. I think this is our last problem here. Our last problem is to find the greatest possible percent error. So the diagram on the right shows the dimensions of a gist box to the nearest inch. Nearest inch. What is the greatest possible percent error in calculating the volume of the gift box? So let's find what our actual volume is. Okay. So our Measured, whoops, measured volume is going to be, volume is going to be length times width times height, okay, so my volume is going to be, well, length, width, height, doesn't matter, but uh, 12 times 6 times 5, which gives me a volume of 360 inches cubed but okay so let's try to find the min and the max okay so because we're measuring to the nearest inch i could be off by as much as a half an inch so for each one of these each one of these units the length the width the height i'm going to pretend that i messed them all up okay to give me the absolute minimum that i could possibly get so instead of 12 I'm going to say I could have got 11.5, half of an inch difference. For six, I could have got 5.5. And for five, I could have got 4.5, which gives me my new volume of 284.625. Let's move this over a little bit. My max, I'm going to go the other way. So my volume length times width times height my volume now i'm going to pretend that i overestimated all these by half an inch so that's to be 12.5 times 6.5 times 5.5 okay to give me a total volume of 446.875 after i multiply them all together okay so 
we need to now figure out which one of these is further away from 360 to give us the greatest possible percent error. Okay, so if I take 360 minus 284.625, I get 75. Ooh, whoops, we get 75.375. Okay, and if we take 360, or let's do it the other way, let's keep this positive. We're going to use absolute value anyway, but 446 minus 875 minus 360 gives me a total of 86.875. So 86 is the bigger number, which means to calculate my percent error, I'm going to take the bigger number, 86.875. And I'm going to divide by the original amount, 360, which gives me 0.24 or 24%. Okay. Sorry about the handwriting. The pen is lagging a little bit here, but we should get the idea. Okay. Let's try one more got a problem, and we'll wrap it up. If the gift box with dimensions in problem five were measured to the nearest half an inch, how would the greatest possible error be affected? Well, so now the greatest possible error is going to be 0.25 instead of 0.5. Okay, so now we're going to have to do all those calculations again. And the error is pretty much going to be cut in half because my measurements were going to be cut in half okay so if i did that all again i could calculate all that and i would get a 12 percent error okay so our quick lesson check last year an athlete's average run time for a mile was six minutes 13 seconds this year six minutes five seconds what is the percent decrease so we calculate well the trick to this is that we know that he is eight seconds different. Okay, so that's the difference. Okay, but we can't divide by six point something. Okay, we got to change six minutes and my original time. Okay, we got to change that from uh, minutes and seconds to just a seconds in order to be able to work with it and it is 373 seconds. So this becomes a 2% decrease. So 0 0.02, which is 2%. Uh, used car dealership buys a car for 2,800 bucks, then sells it for 45. So again, find the difference, divide by the original price of 2,800. Okay, always divide by the original price. A veterinarian measures a horse to be 7.5 feet tall at the shoulder to the nearest half a foot. So we could be 7 feet, or sorry, it could be 7.25 feet or 7.75 feet, right, to the nearest half a foot, which means my maximum error is half of that. Uh, determine whether each situation involves a percent increase or a percent decrease. Original, new. That's decrease. 10 to 8, decrease. Store buys glasses $2, so that's increase. That's not too hard. Greatest possible error of a measurement taking to the nearest tenth of a meter. So tenth is like that, so it would be five hundredths. Okay. Half of one tenth, or 0 0.1 divided by 2. With calculating percent increase, it's a how is calculating percent increase different than calculating percent decrease? It's really not that different as long as you remember that the numerator has to be positive. Okay, so you just subtract the numbers in a way to make the numerator positive, or if you get a negative, just take the absolute value. Okay, and that is 2 10 change expressed as a percent.